We begin in Riverdale, Georgia, on the afternoon of February 25th, 1994, where three-year-old identical twins Michael and Andrew Payne were playing in the front yard while their father, Darrell, kept an eye on them. What are y'all doing, washing out the Jeep? Hmm? Twins. They don't know what to do without each other. Michael, he's more outgoing than Andrew is. He likes to play more. But Andrew, he always follows them and try to keep up with them. They play together real good. Sure do. I turned the ignition on to listen to the radio. Y'all watch it. Don't squirt each other, okay? They was both over there watching the Jeep at the same time. I walked into the house to get some more paper towels. When I heard it pop out of gear, I just wanted to make sure uh, Michael and Andrew was okay. Michael was crying because it scared him. Come on, let's go. I thought Andrew was still cleaning up his Jeep. And then I looked up. He was just lying, lying on the uh, pavement still. He wouldn't even move. When we continued. I didn't think there was a chance for Andrew to even survive. I kept telling him, we need the ambulance here now. We got to get him here. The boy needs him now. He's not going to make it. From her backyard across the street, Evelyn Finn had heard the crash. And I didn't even know if he was dead or alive because he wasn't moving at all. All I saw was he was on his face and the blood just running down the uh, driveway. Neighbor Ken Lederbach also came over to help. When I saw her bend over, Andrew, it looked like a pile of rags to me. I put my hand on him, on his back, and I could see uh, blood was coming out of his ear. And I knew the left side of his face was crushed. He's bleeding from the head. Okay. Hurry. Clayton County Dispatcher Yvonne Lovett was handling the call. He was really scared that he was going to die. You just try to keep comforting them, letting them know, you know, it's going to be okay. And you really hope it is going to be okay. All right, tell him not to put too much pressure on his head, just enough to stop the blood, okay? Stay with us. I didn't Stay. think there was a chance for Andrew to even survive. I could see my daughter laying there. I kept telling him, we need the ambulance here now. we got to get him here. The boy needs him now. He's not going to make it. Within five minutes of the call, a Clayton County Fire Med unit arrived, including paramedic Todd Graves. You could tell it was just a load and go situation. You know, he had a lot of swelling to his head and a lot of deformity. He needed to be at the hospital. When his face came up, it was like chalky white. It was just so terrible. I can't explain the feeling. Brian, go give me some electrodes out of the ambulance, will you? I knew only a miracle would save him. The helicopter came in and did a, a hot land where they don't cut the engines off. We just carry the patient right over, load them up, and then they're gone just that quick. After they airlifted Andrew off, I came up here I came up here and called my wife. She ain't got to work yet. So I told her daddy at work what, what has happened. I told him that Andrew has got ran over by a car. All right, here he comes. 
Three-year-old Andrew Payne was admitted to Eggleston Children's Hospital under the care of neurosurgeon Joseph Petronio. His respiratory status was failing. He was not breathing well. He was not uh, uh, moving a lot of air. Uh, and all of this would only serve to make his, his brain swelling worse. Take a look at him. We'll take it off in a second. His eyes were, were deformed and they were separated. And his nose was fractured and actually pushed back between the eye sockets. Uh, he had fractures of many of the bones of his skull. The frontal bone was actually forced through the, the dura, the membrane that, that covers the, uh, the brain. Contusion, hemorrhagic contusion. We were very concerned about his chances for survival. Jan Payne joined her husband as soon as she could get to the hospital. When I arrived, it was more like I was in shock. Daryl told me that it was his fault and that Andrew was going to die. And I just told Daryl he can't think that, that you got to keep positive towards Andrew. Mr. and Mrs. Payne? Hi, I'm Dr. Petronio, one of the neurosurgeons. We were very frank in our discussion with uh, uh, the Paynes. Um, I told them that there is not a great deal of experience with children that have had such severe crushing injuries to the head that have survived, and, and uh, there were many things um, that could potentially go wrong. Just before Andrew went into surgery, his parents were allowed to see him. He looked like he was on deathbed. That's what he looked like. He couldn't squeeze my hand, but I held his. And I just told him Mama was there and that I loved him. And I'll be there with him. He was uh, lying there, helpless. We told him we loved him. We would go pray for him. And then we left the room. Andrew underwent eight hours of risky surgery to remove bone fragments and blood from his brain and reconstruct his skull and face. He remained in a coma. The first few days were, were quite stormy. He, he had problems with brain swelling, as we expected, and really is, is the major cause of death in the first few days after, after this type of injury. He stayed in ICU for 10 days, and each day he started getting better. Wake up, Andrew. Monday. He just got up on his knees and held out his arm. He cried. That was good. I was glad to hear that. Okay, Stephen. Oh, hey. Come on, Andrew. Come on. A year has passed since the accident. He's doing real good. He's got all the abilities back that he had before. He had to go through uh, therapy for six to eight months to learn how to walk again and talk again. They couldn't believe how fast he, he pulled through this. We have a saying that uh, trauma is no accident. And uh, we sometimes lose sight of, of how fragile children are and how just a, a slip of the mind can result in a, in a, in a disastrous uh, situation. You got your napkins. Don't let your children play in the car. Lock the doors when you get out. Mm -hmm. Because they're just so dangerous. Although Andrew has suffered some hearing loss, Dr. Petronio is amazed Hi, by his progress. Hi. Good to see you again. He's actually done better than we could ever imagine. He looks almost identical to his, his twin brother. Hi. How you doing? Given how he looked when he first came in and, and given the concern that we had about whether or not it was even going to be possible to save his life, to see him playing with his twin brother now, I would, I would consider that uh, to be a miracle. Come on. Yeah. All right. I'd like to thank all the people that were out here, the firemen, the police, um, the helicopter that did fly him to the hospital, and especially Dr. Petronio. He's a great guy. He's super. He saved his life. Next. In a canine search, um, what we do is we allow the handler and the dog to go first, and one or two deputies will follow. 